Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week, for the week of October 15th to the 21st. Obviously, the two big releases this week was Spider Man 2 and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Hopefully, most of you who either own a PS5 or a Nintendo Switch or both were able to get their hands on either one of them or both of them um, this week, though. And, but anyway, we got four stories to cover, including apparently reports coming out that Sony may be under pressure to basically acquire a studio following Microsoft's completed um, acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Um, the Sitara or NPD charts have come out and apparently despite being on Besides start being on Game Pass and all, it seems as though reports show that Starfield definitely had a really good um, September and all. We also are learning about, in terms of the next Halo game, in terms of supposedly um, what they might be doing with the campaign. And finally, the big report that come out that Pete Hines is basically um, leaving uh, Bethesda and all. Um, if you're interested in where I got the source of these informations, I'll have links down in the description down below. Um, so you watch this on YouTube. But before we get started, I like to start off like what I want to do, which is the quick my two cents stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details so. <clears> though. Excuse me. Um, the first thing is that we that Nintendo is apparently going after mod videos, though. That apparently some modders have got their hands on Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and it certainly has certain features, and it has the flowers. Well, let's just leave it as they basically are quote cussing like a bunch of sailors and everything like that. Um, I understand Nintendo's reason for doing this and everything like that, but at the same time. You can't help but feel to some extent you want to hear these flowers, you know, cuss out certain words and everything like that or tell Mario and his friends to go F themselves or anything like that, which would be pretty funny if that happens. But it's Nintendo. You know they're going to do what they can to protect their IPs. Sometimes they're on the right on it. Sometimes I will admit they do tend to go maybe a wee bit overboard at all. We also learned that we saw we also learned that the first screenshots of Hogwarts Legacy has been revealed uh, for the Nintendo Switch. This was shown for those who were going to buy the game digitally and everything like that. Judging from what they showed so far, it looks promising in a way, but I think a lot of people want, will want to know how is the frame rate, how well does it run, and everything like that. And that's sort of a Sort of a mystery um, at this time, though. Um, we'll have to wait and see once that game does come out, which is supposedly um, next month and all, but time will tell whether this game will hold up or not, and we'll be interested to see how well it does on the Nintendo Switch. Um, we also learned that the original reveal for the Nintendo Switch back in 2016 um, has been removed from Nintendo's YouTube channel. Um, no specific reason why, though. Some are pointing out, some are believing that this might be the start of Nintendo um, basically be getting ready to reveal the Switch successor, but others believe that it's most likely it could be a licensing issue ranging from some of the actors and actresses that were in that trailer when, they, when it came out to maybe the music that was used for it though. So, I mean, I think most likely that's probably the possibility though. I mean, yeah, there is there is a possibility it could be gearing up to reveal the Switch successor, but I think it could be just nothing more than just a licensing issue. That probably could be one of the reasons though. Um, we also learned that basically the Phil Spencer wants to know Nintendo fans to feel 100% part of the Call of Duty as they believe that they can get 100% parity or get, you know, Call of Duty running on Nintendo system and all though. With the deal now done, it does seem like we'll be seeing Call of Duty on Nintendo's platform for the next 10 years. How well they optimize it for a Nintendo system um, remains to be seen. It's unlikely, though, anything could happen that we'll see Call of Duty on the Nintendo Switch. The Switch successor, uh, more than likely, we'll probably see Call of Duty come to that system. Now, how well it runs and how well they optimize it, though, that remains to be seen. Same with if they decide to bring Call of Duty Warzone, the free-to-play on um, Call of Duty game, to the Switch successor. Um, 
I do think it is possible that Warzone could come to the Switch successor, though. But again, we'll have to wait and see how basically um, they optimize, you know, the Switch or the Nintendo version of the Call of Duty games and all. Um, continuing on with the Xbox, um, Phil Spencer was recently on the Xbox official broadcast and all, and he started talking about a couple of things. Some of this was the Activision Blizzard acquisition, and some of it did come out that because the acquisition took long, though, it's unlikely likely we'll see basically any Activision Blizzard games or at least some of them make their way over to Game Pass and all that stuff. So it does sound like it's possible that in 2024 we'll start seeing um, basically Activision Blizzard games start making their way to Game Pass. Some spec will probably some see some of the older games make their way over to basically eventually Diablo 4 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Um, a remake will probably make their way to um, Game Pass to even talk about the possibility that maybe Toys for Bots, my, Toys for Bo Toys for Bots, if I'm saying the name correctly, um, to or, to or Toys for Bob, m maybe they could consider having them working on, you know, like a Banjo Kazooie game to probably looking at ways to revive some IPs like Prototype and all. So it's an interesting interview when he was on the podcast. So it's worth. Um, taking a look at if you have the time and everything like that. And finally, last but not least, we have reports that basically Lies of P basically sold 1 million copies already despite being on the Xbox Game Pass. So for a Souls-like game, um, that's not bad that it's basically um, selling very well on the, um, basically selling very well and all, despite it being on Game Pass and everything like that. And finally, in the movie and TV side of our My Two Cent, though, uh, we are learning that the actor that plays um, Kingpin, you know, in the Daredevil Netflix, who will basically make his play place in the Daredevil reboot and everything like that, apparently he is currently leaving, but not the show, but basically um, X, or formerly known as Twitter, and he might be um, leaving um, Instagram and everything like that. There's no particular reason, but some stories floating around is basically pointing to he might be maybe spoiling stuff and everything like that, not uh, and everything like that. So it might be they don't want him to reveal anything, but we'll wait and see them. Um, we're also learning that apparently there is the possibility that Disney may allow you know the creator of Doug to do basically. Um, Basically, you know, a sequel to that series, though. Now, for those who are not familiar, Doug made his premiere on Nickelodeon during, you know, Nicktoons and all, before eventually making its way to Disney. The series, the brand making new Doug is on Disney Plus and everything like that. And they show up some, con the creator showed up some concept art and everything like that that showed, you know, Doug married, you know, the Patty Mayonnaise to basically them having kids, same with Skeeter and all the other folks. So it's an interesting concept and everything like that. And there have been reports that they are probably are working on it though. I am curious to see how this show will turn out and everything like that. I remember watching Doug when I was little though, and it would be very interesting to see him sort of tackle issues now as an adult, having, you know, fan married, having kids and everything. So it would certainly be really interesting to see how that all um, plays out. We're also learning, at least from The Hollywood Reporter, though, that apparently Disney is in the works of a live-action reboot of the cartoon Gargoyles, though. Now, for those who may not be familiar, Gargoyles um, was originally part of, you know, the Disney Afternoon. It was done by Disney. I believe it's currently available on Disney Plus and all. Um, no word of when this will premiere, though. I will say I am kind of mixed on this one. The, li the idea of a live-action Gargoyles, I'm not... 100% sure if it will work or not though. But then again, we saw the, we saw Netflix do one piece and do a live action of that. And that seems to have gone over very well with folks, at least as far as I'm seeing right now. Um, maybe this one might take off. So we'll have to wait and see how this live action Gargoyles, if it does see the light of day to see how well it does. Um, also the Gargoyles video game, I think is currently out um, right now and everything um, like that. And last but not least, uh, though, we do have reports of two actors that unfortunately uh, passed away this week. The first one is Suzanne Summer has recently passed away, I think, at the age of 76, though. Uh, most might remember her, or at least I remember, from seeing her on the sitcom Three Companies um, to even being on the... 
ABC show on TGIF, Step by Step, but others might remember for seeing her in the infomercial for the Thigh Master and all. So unfortunately, um, she passed away. The other person that passed away was Burt Young, who played Pauly in the Rocky movies, but also made appearances in others, ranging from shows like MASH to basically um, Back to School with Roger Dangerfield. Unfortunately, um, he passed away and all. So really unfortunately for both of these actors, these actors have passed away. And my heart goes out to, you know, the fans out there of these actors, to their friends and um, family, um, nevertheless. <clears throat> okay, with the quick my two cent part now done, we'll get started with our first story, and this one has to do with um, Pete Hines. Though now that should be a name for a lot of Bethesda fans out there. Though he was basically, I believe, one of the the PR folks who worked along with Todd Howard over at Bethesda, though, where they made a lot of games that a lot of people that have certainly earned a fan base from the Fallout to the Elder Scrolls series to even basically, um, basically the recent release of Starfield and all. Um, and well, while he certainly has gotten his fans, though, there's also been some criticisms ranging from, you know, stuff like he's saying we embrace chaos and all and everything like that. It's something to do when, you know, with the game development and everything like that, though. Well, recently, though, it has been revealed that Pete Hines has decided to basically um, retire, basically stepping down from his role as working at Bethesda, I believe it was in, like I mentioned, I believe it was in the PR department. In an article from Video Games Chronicles, though, it reads that, quote, Hines, who is the most recognizable figure at Microsoft's own Elder Scroll and Fall publisher, announced the news on his social media channel on Monday. <clears throat> He said, quote, after 24 years, I have decided my time at Bethesda Software has come to an end, he wrote. I am retiring and will begin an exciting new chapter in my life, um, exploring interests and passion, donating my time where I can and taking more time to enjoy um, life. This was not a decision I came to so easily or quickly, but after an amazing career culminating with the incredible launch of Starfield, it feels like the, the time is right. He added, this is certainly not goodbye by any means. My love of Bethesda and its people has never waved, and I will never stop being part of this incredible community we have grown. Thank you for to the hundred of thousands of fans I gotten to meet and talk over the last 24 years. Your energy, creativity, and support has been such a big part of my journey. I look forward look forward to experience the next part of the adventure alongside you. Working with amazing people, team, and studios at Bethesda has been the greatest experience in my life. I'm incredibly proud of everything we have done together, and I'm genuinely excited to see the amazing things they will create next. In, his own, in its own statement, Bethesda praised Hines for the significant role he has played in his in the company's journey. Um, this is what they had to say, quote, Pete's public presence was only a small part of his role at Bethesda, although the way he represented us carried over into the value he nourished here. Authenticity, authenticity integrity, and passion, he said. Um, we, his contribute has been integrated in building Bethesda and its families of studios into the world-class organization that it is today. His vision helped people push us forward and his hard work has inspired us. We thankful for his 24 years of leadership and wish him the best in the next chapter. We'll miss you, um, Pete. And it points out that Heinz is departing Bethesda shortly after the release of Starfield, which is the first game since Microsoft acquired its parent company, Cinemax, in 2021. So it, so it does sound like at the very least, though, that this seems to be that Pete Hines is, a is retiring on a more positive note, at least that's how I'm reading it, though. I mean, is there, is there a possibility there could be something going on in the background and everything like that? I mean, that could be true, but so far, nothing seems to come out and indicate that is um, the case and all. So it will be very interesting to see what he does going forward now, now that he is leaving Bethesda, though. And if he's going, I do think and wonder, many of you are going to be wondering at what point will Todd Howard decide to um, retire and everything like that. Right now, he hasn't announced anything, but I wouldn't be surprised at some point down the road um, he decides to retire. So if he does, hopefully 
Um, the torch is passed on to a next generation that works at Bethesda and everything like that. Um, and don't get me wrong, their games are good. I do enjoy them, though. Not There are certainly criticisms you could make for those type of games, but they are still um, enjoyable um, nevertheless. So overall, um, sad to see Pete Hines go, but nevertheless, he decided this is the time to step back and everything like that. And I wish him the best of luck wherever he decides to go to, whatever life throws at him and everything. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with basically Halo and what sounds like the next Halo game in terms of the campaign and everything like that. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Halo and apparently its future. Now, Halo obviously is one of Microsoft's um, flagship um, title, though. It was released when the first entry was released back when the original Xbox, I believe, came out back at like around 2001 and all. But the series has kind of struggled a little bit when 343 Industry took over from Bungie and all, ranging from some people had with the story to the multiplayer and everything like that. And then of course, Halo Infinite, which was originally supposed to be a launch title for the Xbox Series X and S, but that got basically pushed into, got delayed into the next year, mostly because the first response, when the first, uh, actual gameplay footage or at least the um, single player or the campaign of it though it kind of got hammered hard as a lot of people mocked in terms of the visuals and everything like that which unfortunately that pushed the game back into for a whole year eventually the game came out though it did get some good response but it also got some criticisms and all and mostly a lot of it was in the multiplayer in terms of them pushing for the live service which led to a lot of issues with 343 Industries to unfortunately leading some people being laid off to being, you know, fired and everything like that though. Although now Halo, Halo Infinite though seems to be in a much better position, at least based on the response, at least in the multiplayer side. But the single player side, unfortunately, there were those who were hoping for maybe any DLCs or anything like that as there were folks like me who did like the single player side of Halo Infinite, particularly the open world side, because I think it definitely had a good foundation and I would have liked to see them kind of expand upon that idea of what they did with Halo Infinite though. Well, apparently there are some reports coming out that apparently the campaign, that they, there is plans to work on a new campaign, but it looks like they may be moving to a different engine, particularly the Unreal Engine and all. In the article from Pure Xbox, <clears throat> here's what they had to say. Quote, um, earlier this year, we heard reports that 343 Industry has decided not to bother pursuing any sort of single player DLC for Halo Infinite, instead focusing on multiplayer content post launch. However, that doesn't mean the team hasn't started working on an entirely new Halo campaign, and a fresh rumor suggests that's the case. Speaking on Hogan's Law on um, BitCast, one of the hosts reveals some information on what Microsoft and 343 are up to with the next Halo campaign. This is here's what he had here's what was said during episode 269 of the podcast. Quote, "Do I have any info on the Halo campaign?" The short answer is nothing specific. What I can say, what I know anyway is that yes, they do have a team working on the next Halo campaign. It's part of the restructuring that is that is building the next generation of Halo on Unreal. This isn't the first time we heard about Halo moving over to its current proprietary, Slip Space Engine to Epic's Unreal Engine technology. About a year ago, um, we first heard rumors of the franchise moving over to the popular game engine, following up by further reports in January 2023 by Bloomberg's Jason Schreier. We must stress that none of these reports have been confirmed in any official way, and today's rumor exact is exactly that a veiled an answer about a potential detail on the next Halo campaign. Um, what we do know is that 343 is here to stay when it comes to the Halo development, with the long-term franchise developers confirm it will make epic stories, multiplayers, and more in what makes Halo great in the future. So, 
The idea of switching to the Unreal Engine, which I assume if the rumor is true, they'll probably be switching to Unreal Engine 5 and all, um, may not necessarily be a bad thing. I mean, we've seen developers who have taken advantage of the Unreal Engine and all, and some have done pretty good jobs. I mean, look at, say, like Octopath Traveler 1 and 2. I like those games on the Nintendo Switch, and that runs on Unreal Engine Four and all. So, I mean, this may not be necessarily a bad thing, but we've also seen at the same time some developers have, you know, poorly optimized their game when running on, you know, engines like Unreal or Unity and everything like that. So, we'll have to wait and see if this switch to the Unreal Engine, particularly Unreal Engine 5, is a smart move for 343 industry, though. We know, especially similar to with CD Projekt Red, that are moving away to their in house engine to Unreal Engine 5, especially for the upcoming, you know, Witcher 4 and the sequel to um, Cyberpunk um, 2077. I do hope with the new campaign, if this rumor is true, that it they do maintain, you know, the open world part about Halo Infinite. As I mentioned before, I think it, it's a very good approach and I think it has a foundation to really, you know, expand upon that idea that they had in Halo Infinite with the open world. Um, campaign and everything like that. So I'm hoping they can utilize that in the um, next entry of the Halo series and all. So if, if this rumor is true, it's nice to know that they're working on the campaign though. I do think the lore and the story of the Halo universe is very interesting and everything like that. And I'm hoping they're able to continue and make, um, you know, really good stories and all. And I'm hoping 343 Industry can hit, can nail the landing though, because it seems Past entries, though, has been very much mixed bag, at least for the way 343 Industry has handled um, the Halo and franchise in the past. So, overall, obviously it's a rumor um, at this time and all, but we'll have to wait and see if it turns out to be true. But I am very curious to see how the Halo franchise will be like on the Unreal Engine, particularly I'm leaning towards most likely they'll be using Unreal Engine 5. And if they are working on the campaign, if this is true, I'm hoping they maintain, you know, that open world approach that was in Halo Infinite. As I said, I think it, there's a foundation. It's there. I just hope they try to uh, like to see them sort of expand upon that idea and all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll get to part three and we'll get started with... And we'll get we'll get to the part about October 2023 Sitara, if I'm saying the name correctly, or Katana slash NPD numbers and all. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of my Mind You Sent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Sitar slash NPD numbers as they have just been revealed this week in terms of how, what games did and did well, did or did not did well for um, September 2023. Now, obviously, one of the big releases for September 2023 was basically um, Starfield and all. And most people were kind, and there were some out there that were kind of curious to see how well that game would do, especially since it was a day one release on um, Game Pass and everything like that. Well, the excuse me, the numbers and or the charts have come out and it seems that despite it being on Game Pass, apparently it did very well um, for, for Microsoft and Bethesda though. And in fact, if you, according to the charts or according to Matt Pizzatella, it was the number one game for basically of September uh, 2023 though. So very, very interesting for a game that was also available to buy and on and also on game on game pass at all although some are pointing to the early access which for what we understand sold well and it also sold well i believe on pc based off what the steam charts are saying but anyway here's what basically the top 20 games of september 2023 though <clears throat> excuse me as starfield at number one mortal kombat one at number two ea sports um, FC 24 at number 3, Madden NFL 24 at number 4, Payday 3 at number 5, NBA 2K24 at number 6, The Crew Motorfest at number 7, Armor Core um, 6 Flies of Rubicon, Fires of Rubicon if I say the name correctly, at number 8, 
Hogwarts Legacy at number 9, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2022 at number 10, Star Wars Jedi Survivor at number 11, Resident Evil 4 at number 12. It was at number 27 last month, so the remake bounced up to number 12, though. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at number 13, Minecraft at number 14, Mario Kart 8 at um, number 15, Rainbow Six Siege at number 16, Grand Turismo 7 at number 17, Elden Ring at number 18, Sea of Thieves at number 19, and Diablo 4 at um, number 20, which originally um, last month it was at number 7 and all, so it kind of fell down a bit though. In terms of the years of year to date um, ending September, we have Hogwarts Legacy at number 1, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at number 2, Madden NFL 24 at number 3, Diablo 4 at number 4, no pun intended, um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at number 5, Star Wars Jedi Survivor at number 6, Starfield at number 7, Mortal Kombat 1 at number 8, Resident Evil 4 at number 9, MLB The Show 23 at number 10, Dead Island 2 at number 11, Final Fantasy 16 at number 12, Street Fighter 6 at number 13, EA Sports FC 24 at number 14, FIFA 23 at number 15, Armor Core 6, Fires of Rubicon at number 16, Elden Ring at number 17, Remnants 2 at number 18, Dead Space 2023 at number 19, and Mario Kart 8 at number 20 though. So obviously the big winner for September though obviously goes to um, Starfield though. And in a way, being at number one though, it kind of also by also kind of maybe, I don't know 100%, debunk the whole narrative of that Game Pass camelizes sales or anything like that. I mean, Starfield was on day one on Game Pass and that managed to basically get it at the number one spot. So. Obviously, this is something that I think Microsoft and Bethesda really needed following the um, failed launch of Redfall and everything. Although, lately, it did get a 60 FPS patch and, and so forth, though. So, obviously, this is something that they really needed, and it seems, though, people are enjoying Storyfield. I mean, yeah, there are some criticisms here and there, but I do think it is a good game, although I will admit a lot of it will come down to your view on Bethesda RPGs um, in general, though. I am very curious to see what October's 2023 um, Sitara slash NPDs are going to be like, though, especially with now the two big releases, um, Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Bros. Wonders. I'm going to be very, it's going to be very interested to see how well those two titles will do. I'm kind of curious to see with Super Mario Bros. Wonder, especially after how back in April, how the how the Super Mario Bros. movie did um, very well at the box office, if that will carry over to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And it will also be very interesting to see in when October's numbers come out, where Starfield will be. Will it still remain at number one or, or will it fall down on the chart? So, it's going to be very interesting what an October 2023 Sita Katana or Sitar slash MPD will be like. But for September, though, it turns out to be that that was good for Bethesda and Microsoft with Starfield being at number one and all. Um, no doubt in my mind that they're, they may one day do a sequel to Starfield and all that stuff. But for now, obviously, Microsoft and... <clears throat> Bethesda must be really happy um, to see where Starfield is, though. So overall, it looks like Starfield was the dominated game for September 2023. How October 2023 is going to be like will be very interesting to see how that one plays out, however. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part. And this one has to do with reports seem to be coming out that Sony is somewhat under, might be under pressure to sort of respond after the conclusion of Microsoft now owning um, Activision Blizzard and all. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a um, interesting situation as there are some reports coming out that Sony 
might be under pressure to a certain degree to kind of counter what uh, basically happened with what activate with Activision Blizzard deal. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware by now. Um, Microsoft now officially owns Activision Blizzard. The deal closed um, last Friday, Friday the 13th, which I will admit for, that is sort of an odd date to pick and everything like that. But nevertheless, the deal is officially done. It's over. The saga has pretty much um, come to an end though. Microsoft now owns the right to games like Call of Duty, Diablo, Warcraft, Overwatch, Starcraft, uh, and a lot of basically Activision Blizzard's um, IP. And we also know Bobby Kotick would probably be eventually on his way out. I still don't like the idea he's getting the golden parachute out of this, but he will be gone. And that certainly is a very good thing though. However, there have been, there's been some talks and some folks out there are claiming that Sony needs to respond to this. Sony needs to be able to basically able to respond or do something better than what Microsoft did with the um, Activision Blizzard there. And there have been several articles that kind of have come out about this. This one is from Game Rant that came out that kind of caught my attention on. It said, it reads that, um, quote, um, oops, let me see if I could get that. There we go. All right. It says that, quote, Sony is Current, Sony is currently under pressure to respond to Microsoft Activision, Activision Blizzard acquisition, an industry analyst says. His comments on the matter were offered as part of a wider outlook at PlayStation Baker's prospect following the conclusion of the deal that some argue would give Xbox too much power across the gaming space. After almost two years worth of regulatory reviews, Microsoft officially acquired Activision Blizzard on October 13th. The $68.7 billion transaction is by far the largest such deal in the history of the gaming industry, as well as the biggest ever acquisition in the wider tech sector. Now that Activision Blizzard is part of Microsoft's family game studio, Sony is surely feeling the pressure to react. According to um, Amper, A-M-P-E-R-E, analyst, head of game research, um, Pierce Harding Rolls, Speaking to GameIndustry.biz, Harding rolls on that this recent turn of event will likely push the PlayStation Maker into more acquisitions of its own, including high-profile deals that would offer a meaningful way for Sony to continue competing with Microsoft's ever-growing um, game-making um, setup. Harding's roles is hardly alone in, in, in its predictions, not because... Not, not least because Sony itself has been signaling interest in new acquisitions throughout 2023. The Comet was re reporting even considering spinning off its financial service unit as a public company back in May, all with the goal of funding its future M&A activities. Whether such a move will be necessary for Sony to maintain its organic growth moment Momentum moving forward is unclear, but what's certain is that its acquisition in the gaming space slowed down over the last 12 months after competing five such deals in 2022. Sony acquired just one game studio in 2023, the Washington-based uh, Fire, uh, Firewalk Studios. As for what's next for Microsoft, Harding's roles expect that the tech giant won't attempt an alt alienating or altering Activision Blizzard's core structure in the foreseeable future. While Bobby Cotex already confirmed he'll be stepping down as Activision Blizzard CEO come 2024, a change in leadership won't necessarily have an immediate impact on the rest of the company as things stand right now. Um, Harding Rolls expect that Microsoft will leave Activision Blizzard to operate as a separate entity similar to how it handles ZeniMax Media after it acquired it in early 2021. Such a, such a strategy will leave um, such a strategy will leave Microsoft with three independent um, game publishing arms, Activision Blizzard, Cinemax, and Xbox Game Studios. And while PlayStation, it, while PlayStation is now starting to feel the sting from Microsoft's ZeniMax acquisition, this newly concluded deal might take longer to start yielding possible advantages for Microsoft. That's largely due to a, a July deal that saw Microsoft vow to keep Call of Duty, Activision Blizzard's flagship franchise on PlayStation for the um, foreseeable future. While meanwhile, over at Video Game Chronicles, um, though um, some analysts believe that um, believe that Sony could respond with a major deal of its own, um, they're pointing to basically 
that they could basically, they could try to buy leading third-party publisher um, scale, take Chew Interactive with a market capitalism of around $24.6 billion. However, they, they also point out that they could also attempt to capitalize on the strength across film, TV, games, and music by launching a new cross-entertainment subscription offering them. Um, they, but however, they also point out that it's unlikely that micro, that Sony will buy, you know, Chick Chu Interactive or anything like that, though. So it does sound like we're probably not going to see the end of these acquisitions um, anytime soon or anything like that. And I'm not sure if Sony could batch the kind of money that uh, Microsoft was able to spend to buy um, Activision and Blizzard or anything like that. But I don't deny the fact that they'll probably be under pressure to acquire um another studio and all. Whether they do or not, that um, remains to be seen, um, to be exact though. As far as Microsoft goes, um, I don't deny that they'll probably acquire another studio, but I'm not sure if they want to go through the headache that they had to go through to ultimately get um, Activision Blizzard or not. So yeah, I do think that we're going to see more push for acquisitions from companies like Microsoft and Sony. Maybe Nintendo, but not as much as on the scale of what Microsoft and Sony are probably doing and everything like that. So overall, I won't deny the fact that there is a possibility that Sony could be under pressure to really start countering, you know, the acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. Um, what they do or not, that remains to be seen. It will be very interesting to see what Sony does. Maybe they do respond to it, or maybe they don't um, at all in any way. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Pete Hines um, retiring from Bethesda, though? Do you think this is a good? Do you think this was a good thing for him to do? Do you think it was a bad thing for him to do? Do you think there was maybe drama behind the scenes that made him retire, or do you think it was felt like he did what he wanted to do and now he wants to leave Bethesda and all? What are your thoughts about this report about the new Halo campaigns and possibly running on the? Unreal Engine, maybe Unreal Engine 5. Do you think the idea of switching to a new engine is necessarily a bad thing or do you think it's a good thing? And for the Halo campaign, do you think they should improve upon what they did with Halo Infinite or do you think they should go back to more like the linear approach from before Halo Infinite um, came out and all? What are your thoughts about the NPT or Satana charts that came out? Were you surprised to see Starfield make it at number one though? Were you pleased to see it at the top charts though? Are you, do you think it will stay at number one when the October 2023 number come out? Or do you believe that that could go to either Spider-Man or Super Mario Bros. Wonder or some other game in October and all? And what are your thoughts about the possibility of Sony being under pressure to respond to Microsoft owning, now owning Activision Blizzard though? Do you think more acquisitions are in the card for Sony though? Do you think they can make a purchase that rivals what Microsoft did with Activision Blizzard? Or do you think Sony might want to take a different approach to respond to Microsoft now owning um, Activision Blizzard and all? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sign off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through, excuse me, through PayPal, me, Patreon, or Steam Labs if you want to. Links will be in the description of this video so you can watch this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!